first speaker of the day, uh, which is uh, a, a very dynamic female engineer, the first engineer in UAE. Uh, she made her country proud with her achievements and uh, she's serving the Abu Dhabi uh, senior program manager in Abu Dhabi new terminal. Ittihad Aviation Group, and uh, she has a lot to say. I think uh, it's better if I ask her to introduce herself and then share her thoughts about uh, the, the women in UAE and uh, several other things which is in her thoughts which she want to share with this global community of women. So like engineer, Saud Sultan Al Shamsi. Good evening, everyone, uh, and good afternoon uh, for most of the people in other country. And I wish you a happy weekend, or maybe for us is the last day in the weekend, and we have to go to work tomorrow. Other country they have their first day in the weekend. So hopefully everyone is staying safe, and um, it's a very honored to be with uh, such an amazing uh, planner, an event, and a lot of uh, amazing speaker. I just saw their name, and hopefully after this situation, we can connect in, in real life, not via virtual and uh, any, any system. Um, as they introduced me, um, uh, Dr. Engineer Suad Sultan Shamsi, the first UAE aircraft engineer, a specialist in landing gear system. I've been in the aviation industry for 15 years, uh, working as an aircraft engineer for 10 years. Uh, now, fifth, five years, I'm working as an, a consultant, which is an aviation advisor for uh, the third biggest airport in the world is Abu Dhabi International Airport. Uh, and hopefully the opening will be next year when it will be the announcing, we can announce the exact date. Um, maybe people will see that I'm so passionate about the aviation industry and aircraft. And when I started my career in 2001, exactly, people, they were talking about the gender. It's not allowed for women to be in aviation industry and especially as a, and a pure mechanical uh, and dynamic um, environment, which is at all as it's, it's a gender, it's only male. And I always um, reply and I answer why we sh always think that the gender should be a factor whether or not pe person can be a succeed or a leader. I always believe that each woman in all the world, not within, with the only UAE, even within the world, uh, from any background, um, forget about the nationality, forget about the religion, forget about any background she's coming from, a lot of reason that all of us, we are connected and actually we born as a leader. And when I said a woman, she's born in, uh, to be a leader because she has a big a dream. She can wear different hat, a lot, a lot of other gender or another person cannot do it. So I think uh, when I started my career, people said, you cannot do it. Uh, it's not possible. You are not a male. And which is it, I keep, asking what the huge difference between what I should do and the man do. What should I learn and what the man should learn. And I remember the first day uh, I've been announcing to many organizations, many people that I want to study aeronautical engineering. People keep saying that you are dreaming. And when it came to the word of a dreaming, I remember I said, it's my passion. It's not about just a dream. So I have to learn how to connect my brain, my heart with my body to reach to my passion. And the first thing I was doing, I educate myself because in previous time, I never speak except one language, which is the Arabic language. And I know that this education is not allowed to be within our Arab country, which is it now in Middle East and a lot of countries, they are allowing women to study aeronautical engineering or enter to the aviation industry. But past day when it's 2001, we were only in the university. I was a graduate from Hartford Chair University by, with my bachelor degree. My um, master and my uh, PhD, I did it with Coventry University in UK. And I noticed even in the UK, there are very small percentage of lady actually in aviation industry. And a lot of them, high percentage, they enter to the aviation industry, but after 
uh, they finish their education and they start their career because of the environment it's not built to accept them a lot of them either resign either they change their career either they're fed up so always i keep saying they have to be a support educating our new generation that they have the opportunity in any industry not only we have to build in their mind that you are born to be a doctor or you are born to be a journalist or you should you born to be an an a wife uh, in, in a house or a mother only i do respect the mother my mom she's a mother um uh, I am a mother of two boys. I think we can have the work-life balance because, as I said, we born to be a leader. We can be a good leader within our career, with our passion, with our hobbies as well. We can be within our an, an industry or any. So it's just how we can educate and build the opportunity for our new generation to show them that they're a real great leader from a woman's side in many industry. And if she has a passion about it, she dreamed to be, we are there to help you. Uh, when I graduated, I been building my own company, separate from my actually general or main uh, company where I'm working with. And I did this as a consulting company to help the new generation within the university, within a school, uh, child, children with, for between seven and 13 years, and as well, any women are actually struggling within the industry itself. And we show them that we can connect together from the L2L consultation. Other, uh, otherwise, they can come uh, via Women in Aviation organization. And this organization, we uh, it's already in, in uh, US, and we created our chapter in Middle East from more than seven years. And we want to say, show to the any lady that if she's struggling, that we are there to support you. So we offer scholarship, we offer consultation, we offer the opportunity to to um, to participate in any worldwide conference or workshop or anything. So the question came always, if the woman, they're born as a leader, why we don't give them the opportunity? Why we don't make a, gr a great listener to them? Why we don't always, we kept saying, if you want to enter to an industry, you have to work the double job that the man, he do it. Why we don't always say you can do it and connect and show the, the leader that you can be in the future leader. I think this is the good opportunity from our, our conference here today and many conferences to show the ability of the woman and her skill to balance. I am a mother of two boys. One is six year old and two years old. I am a writer. I have my own hobby of reading books, which is that I have a target every year to read between 180 to 200 books. I write my own books, which I have five novels. My the fifth novel actually will be launched on 4th November and charge a book fair. And also, I have my own career, which is that I'm so happy. When we show and support the ladies in all of her life, and help her to balance it. I think she will be the greatest mother, she greatest employee, and she can be a good image for her country, for her family, and for herself. Rather than we depress her and say, you cannot do it, or it's, we give her this the negative vibes, I think it's the positive to show her that you can do it. Uh, many years ago, when I started my career, a lot of people, they try to push me back. They try to have this a huge gap between me and my colleague. They have to a lot of negative vibes, which I connect my mind, my heart and my body. And I always keep saying for three of them that Suad, you can do it. You can succeed. This is your opportunity to show the society, to show the world that you can do it. You are different and you can bring, bring the image of UAE Emirati, of the Arab woman, and any woman in this world, you can show her that she can succeed if you succeed. So this is um, the main story of mine. In 15 years, um, I noticed that a lot of uh, my followers uh, from a lot of girls, and my own student now, they graduate and they are uh, entering to the industry as aircraft engineer. I'm so proud of them. And I'm, I'm hoping that in the future we find high percentage of women in aviation industry. Thank you for having me today here in this conference. And, and I hope that and from here, 
we can reach to our boys that we have the opportunity to reach worldwide and have high percentage of ladies innovation in Dhamma. Oh, that's amazing. I think your speech uh, and your thoughts and your they are itself full of motivation and experience because in certain countries, uh, women still don't uh, able to break this stereotyping, which you call that if a woman wants to be an engineer, they say, no, 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 this is a girl, uh, put her in arts uh, or maybe design. Musa, we need to show the lady more I can thank for ladies. If you are, can be a role model. It's not about to be the first or the second or the last. A lot of ladies, they've been a graduate and they have high degree. Mm -hmm. They have high percentage in high school, maybe GPI and, and a lot of, maybe they have a graduate with A plus in the university. But when they came in the career, they always think about their self. They don't want to support the new generation. I think this is the right time to change the mentality of the people to see, okay, I've been there in the industry. I can help a lot of ladies, a lot of students. This is the opportunity to, to use actually the social media, to, to use this uh, bath and to show the lady that we are there to help. It's not about, no, you cannot do it. Because I'll, everyone, if I will go to a lady and say, no, 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 it's so challenges, it's difficult, uh, you will face a lot of challenges. Yeah. What will happen? That she will leave her passion. She will change her dream. But maybe I can tell her, yeah, there are challenges. There are a lot of things you have to do with, but you can do it. You can be better than Suad. This is the different vibes. I think we, we need to give it to the ladies. And we can see that a lot of ladies there, but they need to be a role model. It's being a leader, it's a nice thing. I can put it in my CV or I can put it in my wall backside that I'm a leader. But to be the role model, this is the, the best thing women can do with to show that, yeah, she born as a leader, but she can be a, a role model. This is the difference. Oh, that's amazing. Actually, uh, what I can see in yourself that uh, even watching and listening you will give a lot of motivation and Especially so when you're so when you're so supportive and your profile and your effort, your life story is really impressive. Uh, I just want to po uh, put a last question before we close. Yeah. Is uh, you see that if you are married, as you said, you have two babies and uh, two boys, and uh, it's really hard to balance the work and uh, the life. And sometimes. Uh, the husbands and in-laws you know the social setups to social stigma creates you force you not to be in the work it's kids are small now focus on them you know something like that so what is your advice for such kind of ladies who are into that situation and they want to really contribute i i always believe that the lady when they are so honest with their husband where their father where their brother to show them what passion about. Okay, when I start my career, first of all, um, my my father he passed away when I was ten months. So um, I have my mother. I have two two brothers. They are elder than me. So always the question came from my older brother: Why you want to be an aircraft engineer? What you will do? The the college here is not available now. Yeah, in UAE we have in the Middle East, but the previous it was not. If you will travel. You will be by your own. I think he gave me the challenges before I face it, but I, I show him that this passion, it's my dream and my career. This is what you need to show and be honest. And you know you need to show it even to your husband. When I got married and, and it came, it showed me how to balance my life. I have to give, to do a schedule. Maybe previously when I do a schedule, I do it for my own. Uh, when I get married, I have to do it with my, with an including my husband. When I have the children, I have to give them time. So what I do, I have a timetable, which is at weekly, uh, daily, and monthly, and yearly, which is at balancing where does it, even for the time for myself, because a lot of ladies, when they are having a career, they're having a family, they forget about their self. They, if you will ask her, she will always say, I don't have my time to go to drink coffee with my friend. I don't have time to watch a TV. I don't have time to read book because I have blah, blah, blah. A lot of things, a lot of ladies actually, they've been delivering 
their hobbies, they're deleting their social life because they cannot uh, balance. So I think when you have this timetable, a daily uh, timetable that what you have to do, even for me, when I do it as a daily, Musa, what I do, even to remember, I have to call my, my mother or I have to call uh, to remember how the food to put it. I have this day to eat with my children because I'm night shift. So I think this is, it's okay. People will say it's very complicated, but very systematic that will can help you to balance your, your life. And you will enjoy it as much you succeed when your passion with the support with your family, you will give more for them. So this is what I always is to think that don't give too much for your career, which you forget your family and yourself and don't give to, to a lot to yourself and your family, which you forget your career. I think this is the balance we uh, all women should have it. And I always say the women, they can wear different hat. They are capable to do it and they have to skill, but they have to train and trial how to do it. Amazing. I think you are a perfect manager and you manage the personal and career Thanks, God. all yeah. as per the schedule. That sounds really amazing. <laughs> and because you are here, uh, I just want you, you are a leader, you are, a, uh, you are, it's yourself, a iconic, achieved person. So what is your advice to those countries policy makers who don't focus on their human education and healthcare? so what is your advice to them i think the voice always i keep saying Musa, it's just to help through i think previously i always say when it came to breathe no a decision making because we don't have a social media we don't have and and a program and people they never talk what they want what they don't um now in 2020 the life is different people can reach their voice they're at twitter their facebook their instagram they are linkedin there are a lot of things i think should to compare Okay, for example, uh, one of the, the country I don't want to mention, when lady, she, she worked with me in the aviation consultant in um, the airport, she told me, I want to learn how to build an, a special conference in our country for a woman and, and a leadership. We never had it. So we help her with a timetable. We have her how to create this conference and to start to do it small because we have actually many conference five years for women in aviation. And I give her the tips how to do it. We help her. And she launched it at actually on December 2019, the first conference. Come, uh, highlighting uh, the woman in aviation. So I think a visit about the healthcare, about women, about uh, women empowerment, about anything, the voice of the people, they can reach to the government, uh, create a website, which is not against the, uh, the government, no, uh, to, to give them a suggestion how they can improve. Uh, I think as, to give them an example, United Arab Emirates, especially Dubai and Abu Dhabi and a lot of uh, seven Emirates, it's a good example for many countries worldwide. Take a country as example, take a role, role model as a woman as example, take the example to change for and reach to the decision maker and leader in your country to show them that we want to be better. I always say to be better than them rather being similar to them. This is the difference by how positive you are in your life. That's amazing. I think if uh, we get one more Mohammed bin Zayed in these developing countries, he can transform these countries very easily. So it's all about the human capital and leadership and dedication towards your citizen. And I think developing countries leaders need to look into all your advices are precious and full of experience and expertise. So with this, I want to thank you for joining thank us. You. I know you are really busy and you take out this time to share with the women and uh, I'm sure they got a lot of value. Thanks a lot. Thank you everyone for listening to me and I hope we can share our experience more and meet in a personal, all of us. <clears throat> Thanks a lot.